Okay, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some editing tricks. These are not so much tricks, it's just maybe little tips to help you along. And I'm going to suggest something that might help you. Maybe not, you can try it, but uh, there's a couple things. Let's first of all, here I have a sphere, and I have just some things selected. I'm just going to press A and press A again like that a couple times. All right, now they're all deselected. Well, in the old days, there was one way to select the front and the back of a sphere, but it, things do change, so nowadays, if you just normally select, let's say I press the C key, and I have that little circle. Can you see that there? And I'm scrolling it with the wheel mouse like that. And then if, with that, I can just left click and I've selected that cube like that. I'm going to hit escape and I'm going to roll, roll around the back side and nothing's selected like that. Okay. If you press this little button right down here, and it changes it. So you kind of, it's kind of see-through mode like that. All right. And then if I press C, and there's my circle again. I can change the size with the wheel mouse, and I come over here and I press that. Not only have I selected these faces, well, I mean these vertices on this side is what I actually have. I'm gonna, I go around to this side. I also have those as well. All right. So sometimes you want to be able to select both sides, sometimes not, because otherwise you, the other way to work is you just go in unshaded wireframe mode, and then you can select both sides at will like that. All right. So I'll go back and do here. So I'm in material mode when I'm doing this like this. All right, now let's take another look. I'm going to turn this off. So I just have this selection here. I'll press A, turn all those off. Also on the C key for circle select, this is really nice. If you press C and you have the circle and you wheel mouse to get a larger circle. Now instead of having to hit, let me just left click here and I have those selected like that. I no longer have to hit the escape key. You can just press the right mouse button like that and what happens is it it gets rid of your circle alright so let me do that again I press C I have the circle I just click the right mouse button and it's the same as if you had just pressed the escape key that's pretty quick alright I'm gonna press A again this time I'll press C I'm gonna select those and without moving the mouse now I'm gonna press the middle mouse button and I deselect alright so left mouse, left mouse button selects like this right middle mouse deselects like this and then the right mouse gets rid of it. So it's fast and easy. In the same way when you press the B key, you get the B, the bonding box like that. You can bring it up like that. Or if you've decided, you know, you have it and you decide you don't want to use it, instead of having to look away and go find the escape key, you can just right click and then you've gotten rid of it like that. These are all just little helpful tricks. All right, now there's a couple other things. Basically, everything we've just done, you could press, say, Control Z right now, like we've always done, and undo one level, which I'll do right there. So I just undid that. But you can also press Control and followed by Alt and then Z. So Control Alt Z. You have to press that Control Alt before you press the Z, and it brings up a menu. And it gives you a history as of the things that you have done. And I'll go back to Circle Select. So it takes me back multiple steps at one time. All right, that's really useful. And now the tip I'm going to suggest is kind of like the same way uh, since I've been programming for years and sometimes people ask me, well, what can you do to be a programmer? One of the things I say is take a typing class. It's so important. All right. Well, so, you know, not having to look at the keyboard at all times is really very productive. Well, the same thing in Blender. So one thing you might try, you may like it, you may not. With your left hand, put your uh, pinky on the control key and your ring finger on the shift key and your pointer finger on the alt key and kind of leave them there and kind of like make that the place that you, those fingers hang out okay and the reason being is those three keys are so often used with everything like for instance if I hold down with those things I'm going to press my shift key with my ring finger and I'm going to scroll the wheel mouse so I scroll up and down I'm going to press the alt key with my I mean the control key with my pinky finger and move the wheel mouse. I go left and right. And then you can use those two keys in conjunction with Alt. So I'll press Control Alt and use the middle wheel mouse. And it rotates this way. Or I do Shift Alt and I rotate and it rotates it up and down with the wheel mouse. And also if you press the shift key and just hold down the middle wheel mouse, you can just move everything around like that. So and or the control key will zoom in and out smoothly like this because if I just use the wheel mouse it steps and jumps but if I hold down that control key and hold down the wheel mouse it's a smooth zoom in and out like that and so then it's easy to access all those so then if you're 
you point your fingers on the Alt key, it's one little step away from C from getting the circle select. So select, deselect, turn off. So that's easy. You're then also to get a model up in the scene. I can press Shift A easy enough just by that ring finger hitting shift and my middle finger hitting A. So there I have that like that. So if sometimes something like this takes about, you know, 15, 20 minutes of just doing a, an exercise of practicing things like that. And then you might get used to it and you might find it really useful and you don't have to look away. And things like Control R, you know, you can bring those up in edit mode like that. Control R so you can get your selection like this. If you decide you don't want it, you can just right click and that, remember that right clicks the same as like using the escape key. Alright, so now I'm out of edit mode and one last thing we'll look at in this lesson is normally I come in here and I want to move this on the left on the x-axis. I can left click here and move it up and down. I can left click like that or I can press G and move it like that. Well you can also just uh, anywhere in the window you can hold click the right mouse button and hold it down and just start moving it and you've instantly grabbed the object. And then if you right mouse again you release it to the original place. Alright let me do that again. I just hold down the right mouse button and I start moving the mouse and I let go of the mouse and I have it. And now if I left click anywhere it gives it the new location. Alright so those are just a few things to consider. You may find them useful but it is a powerful way to work and they since they change things all the time I'm always looking around for ways to make my workflow just a little bit more efficient because sometimes you know one or two seconds here added up over the t course of a day makes a big difference. Okay well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson.